Okay, so today is Tuesday, December 19th, 2023, and the last video I completed the horizontal stabilizer, and the instructions say even though the next step is to go to the elevator, it's highly suggested that you move on to the vertical stabilizer because uh, the elevator is actually, the, well, they say it's the most difficult part or component in the assembly process, and to just keep continuing to build your uh, sharpen your building skills by doing the vertical stabilizer, uh, the rudder, and then going back to the elevator. So um, I have unwrapped, deburred, and dimpled the ver vertical stabilizer components. And I am right now I'm at the step of uh, installing these riv nuts. Um, these are going to go, they're going to be sandwiched in behind this. Uh, vertical stabilizer spar and so they'll be sandwiched between this piece and this piece which really helps to hold them in place so they don't they don't spin uh, improperly installed riv nuts are no notorious for spinning and so uh, really to help prevent that spinning I, I think it was pretty genius that the uh, the, the, the designers actually uh, created this one so that it would be sandwiched in between to really press in and hold that in place. See, even further, uh, keep these from spinning in place. I've, uh, you, can, you can use epoxy, I suppose, or I could use epoxy, but I'm using a Loctite 620, which is the permanent Loctite, and I just put it on the riv nuts and inserted them, and then I'm actually gonna, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little dab of the same thing uh, on each of the riv nuts when I go to sandwich those in here. Um, I did buy a different riv nut tool, which is a little bit easier to calibrate. Um, some of the things I learned about really making a good riv nut connection is to screw the riv nut all the way down to the uh, head here, and then back it off about one millimeter. And then the squeeze should go all the way to that the handles actually touch together. Um, and you can adjust that here by extending this piece, this, this, uh, this head piece here, and then it has a lock ring. So that really fine tunes it. And I, I did some practicing on a piece of uh, 05 aluminum, which is the same thickness as this here. Uh, and these are M4 uh, riv nuts. So, went pretty well and I'm pretty pleased with it. I tried to turn, these These don't have the, the, the Loctite on them. I've tried to turn them with my pliers and they're in there good. So I'm pretty pleased with that connection. And so I'll, I'll continue on with the, the assembly of the, the uh, vertical stabilizer. So a little bit of a hiccup here. I completed the riveting of the vertical stabilizer skeleton, for lack of a better term, framework, I guess, ribs and spars together. Um, and as, as I was going to run the wire along the spar and through the grommet holes uh, for the beacon at the top of the rudder, I realized I had pulled the wrong wire through the horizontal stabilizer and the wire that's now in the horizontal stabilizer is the wire that's supposed to be used for the vertical stabilizer. So the way I'm going to try to solve this problem is this is the wire or a cable for the vertical stabilizer. I'm sorry, for the horizontal stabilizer. The wire that's in it is the wire for the um, vertical stabilizer. So I took a piece of uh, heat shrink and connected the two, and I'm just gonna try to pull through 
and see if it all comes out the other side. This is just a standoff. I used an Adel clamp with a, a grip tie to uh, create a standoff there to create uh, or to really actually prevent any sort of chafing for the wire. So let's see if this works. So far so good, we're for, through the first grommet. There it is. Okay. All right. Well, that saved a headache. Now I know what to do if I ever want to replace this wire in the future. So I'm finishing the, the skin on the vertical stabilizer. I did the bottom, and now I'm going to do this left side of the vertical stabilizer. And a couple things I've kind of picked up on how to do this, this riveting uh, that's helping me actually uh, is, for example, well, one of the things I've done is I've tuned this gun. I actually put a high flow fitting on here. I was getting a little bit of air leaking with the smaller uh, orifice on this, uh, on this uh, air connection. So I have a high flow fitting on here, no more air leak and uh, also, I was kind of getting mixed up on the different tips for the different size mandrels, and so I just put a block of wood together, and I have all my tips organized, and then I just I, I wrote down here what the different si uh, number rivets are. So that's been helpful with my organization. As I've be been riveting, I, I really am, am conscious about riveting from the leading edge back and, and just kind of do a whole all the way across so that the, the, the skin is actually pushing itself back towards the, the, the rear spar. So I don't want to go forward and maybe risk the potential of buckling the skin. I just think laying it down, coming backwards this way, really will get the best and tightest fit to the ribs. And then finally, what I've decided to start doing is being more conscious about my riveting and that I keep my finger off the trigger when I'm putting the uh, mandrel into the tip, turn this on. I keep my finger away from the trigger. And then I pause for a second. Then I go ahead and pull. Put my finger away from the trigger, pause, pull. Pause, pull. The reason I'm doing that is occasionally there'll be times where I don't have the tip all the way down the mandrel and I accidentally hit the trigger and it'll pull the rivet and I'll have to go and drill that rivet out. And so this is kind of helping me prevent that. And I know that I'm, in, I'm, I'm pushing down, not pushing really hard, but just maybe just the weight of the tool against the top of the rivet head and then pull the trigger. So that avoids a lot of mistakes and kind of confirming as I'm going through here that I'm where I need to be on that rivet head. So those are, those are a few things I've picked up so far on this riveting using pull rivets.
Okay, so finally, I've got two uh, rib nuts I need to set here on the third and four, five, sixth hole. I've already installed the rib nuts here and here on the other side. I'm using the uh, step drill that came with the rib nut kit. And for, for the M4, I'm going down to the third step. Put the rivet nut onto the tool, back it off about a millimeter. Put it in the hole. And then screw it. Do the same thing with the other one. And that completes the vertical stabilizer. It's amazing how well these components go together. It's just it's like a piece of art. Everything's just perfectly true. No ripples or bulges or oil canning or anything. It's just amazing.